absolutely big business. Absolutely. Stora Enso is among the largest forestry companies in the world. They are very well known for their sustainable development practices. They see great potential in expanding their operations in Asia, but this exposes them to a very different set of risks. We are in the Guangxi province in southwestern China. Here are millions of eucalyptus trees that will become cardboard packaging and ensure the success of Swedish-Finnish company Stora Enzo in the huge Chinese market. But many of the poor peasants who own the land feel exploited by Stora Enzo. It's a, it is very interesting to see all the, all the things. Nordea's top researcher has arrived here on a tough mission. Antti Savilaxo came from the Stockholm headquarters to investigate whether there's any truth in the accusations against Stora Enzo. Nordea is a major investor in the global paper and cardboard producer and takes the accusations very seriously. Yeah, so this is the, this is the contract that the Stora Enzo has done with the, with the local community. In this village community, you have, I think, eight, eight villages and 16 production teams. Criticism has been particularly targeted on a large number of contracts with local people that Stora Enzo has signed in order to get the right to dispose of the plantation areas. We welcome you to be here today. <laughs> Local peasants have allegedly been threatened and in some cases subjected to violence to accept and sign the more than 1,500 contracts. Oh, there's been a threat of violence in signing into these contracts. Mm. Has he heard anything, anything like that? Stora Enzo employees in China have shown a humble attitude to the situation. Everybody knows that we have some problems and we have to uh, renegotiate sometimes, we have to improve the contracting situation. And the head of operations does not deny the fact that there are problems. I think every company has a lot to learn in any globalization adventure, also from NGOs. We don't have to, we should not be naive. This environment is far more challenging than any environment that we've been in so far. Here at Stora Enzo's Chinese Market Garden, you get a feeling of the enormity of the operation. These women put millions of eucalyptus seeds into the ground every year, and up come little plants. After seven years in the plantation, these have turned into the 20 million trees that Stora Enzo need every year to keep its operation going. Once the operation is fully developed, Stora Enzo will cut down 50,000 trees a day, or one tree for every one and a half seconds. In the end, you just need to have the, the best, best few clones, five years down the line, best few clones to, have a, to be able to chop down 20 million of these every year. <laughs> Yeah, you can say that, but you have to you have to replace them all the time. You have yeah, to yeah, the material. So yeah, it's you, you cut down one, you yeah, plant one. Yeah. During the visit to the forest, Stora Enzo talks warmly and constantly about the so-called yield. How by developing the perfect clone, they can achieve the best result or squeeze the biggest amount of wood out of the soil as possible. Even if you have an invasion of insects or pests or diseases, uh, the clone Technology is quite efficient. Mm. Stora Enzo's focus on profit is criticized by the NGOs because the natural balance of the area, the so-called biodiversity, is lost when you cultivate one sort only. Stora Enzo's constant focus on yield reflects a very precise picture of the development in China right now. When big global corporations turn to Asia to deliver the growth of the bottom line, which they cannot do from the shrunken markets in the West. 1.2 billion Chinese, 
Chinese inhabitants we use a lot of package import and that's the market where Storainz wants to be. I understand the business logic behind and there's no question about that the fact that the the, the original intent of, of moving to China there's a solid business uh, business reasoning behind. Apart from accusations concerning the many dubious contracts on soil around the villages and the loss of biodiversity, Stora Enzo is faced with other serious challenges. And, and this in the future is going to be our freshwater intake. A complete paper mill compound was supposed to be up and running at this time. Then we have the energy block and then we have the board machine, warehouses. And, 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 and pulp dryer. But for reasons unknown, the Chinese authorities have not yet issued the final building license. So after 10 years in China, Stora Enzo is not yet ready. The building site for the mill is old farming land. More than 2,000 people have lived and toiled the land here and they have now been forcibly displaced to a nearby area where Stora Enzo has co-financed the erection of a new village for the former peasants. But as the mill has not been built yet, there are no available jobs. Instead of uh, growing your food, you need to get money and buy the food and therefore you kind of uh, earn the market prices. So how, how, how does he feel about the about the change in life. After having visited Stora Enzo's operation in China, Anti Savilaxo has one black mark in particular. I'm, uh, I'm, I am concerned. There is not enough uh, of, uh, of, first of all, understanding, and second of all, organization, um, organizational capacity in order to uh, uh, address the potential risks. You need to have people and you need to have boots on ground in, in order to make sure that the, every single one of those 150,000 households uh, are comfortable with the, with the Sturain's operations as well. Without that, that kind of a level of comfortableness or without that, that social license to operate, the, the company might lose the, first of all the social license to operate, but the, secondly even the legal license to operate and, and basically force them to exit China.